And hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Open Dragon Mouth. Uh, I know I haven't made a video all month, mainly because my laptop was in the shop. It had a faulty fan, so I had to get that replaced. Had to take a couple weeks for it to get it repaired. Uh, also been out of town, so a lot of stuff going on. But all right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first part of this video is pretty much going to be a lot about Pokemon, uh, mainly because of the uh, the game uh, on the mobile the mobile app and just in general. Uh, first off, um, I know most of you wouldn't care, but I currently have 93 out of the 150, so I'm getting there. But I have just pulled up this article that there are actually some parents who are naming their children after Pokemon characters. Now. My first reaction is, are you trying to embarrass your kids? Because celebrities already know how to do that. Now, of the names that were given, the most popular one that seems to come up is the Gen 3 Pokemon Roselia. Which, I'll admit, is not the worst name that they could have given their child. But then you have names like Onyx, uh, Eevee, Ash. Now... Try finding someone uh, with their name being Pidgey or Muck. That would be a lot worse. But personally, I would be okay with with a name like Roselia because it's really not the worst name. That I mean, there are names like like Rose, but it's not the worst. But again, you can't just name your child just because it's fun to use or it's based on your favorite show. This this just sets up for a terrible life for your, for a child, especially when it comes to school. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see. Uh, there, there's this video that perfectly sums up. Look for uh, Grady Underay's uh, video about, about dumb names. I mean, he pretty much puts it very well. Uh, let's see. But uh, on, a, on a brighter side, there's actually going to be, um, in about one hour uh, from the recording of this video, Build-A-Bear is going to be releasing an Eevee plush that you can make. Um, yeah, it's going to be one hour, so it'll start uh, September 1st. Now, the plush itself will be about $28. Uh, there will be... A special edition that will be online only that'll be worth $62, which will include outfits for Eevee that will include um, Pokeballs um, emblazoned on it, or a cape with the faces of Eevee's evolved forms. Um, it will also include sound and a stamped trading card that also comes with the standard version. Uh, there's uh, there's also a non-Build-A-Bear Eevee that doubles as a computer keyboard wrist rest. So um, be on the lookout for that if you're a Pokemon fan. Um, I know the nearest the nearest one near me is about an hour north of me. Uh, let's see what else do we got? Um, now I have mentioned um. Not a fan of the uh, Angry Birds uh, movie. But now there is word that Rovio is going to make a sequel uh, to, to this. So it's a mediocre movie that really deserved a, re uh, a remake. Um, well, not a remake. It's more of a sequel. But uh, again, Angry Birds is is something that, that didn't need to be made into a movie. I mean, how can you possibly build a storyline from it? But it did uh, gross 347 million worldwide, which is um, which is actually pretty good. I was um, quite surprised it actually was a success. Um, right now, right now it uh, it carried a 73 million dollar budget uh, among the core audience of under 25. So of course it wouldn't be for me. Um, and 
it, and it was released on DVD and Blu-ray not too long ago. So, uh, I mean, it's not of the worst movie, but a sequel is not is not going to be it's not going to be good. I can tell you that. There's not much plot you can put onto Angry Birds. Uh, so, right now, I don't have a date for when that is going to be available. Uh, though, a movie that I did go to see was Peach Dragon. And, uh, unlike before, I'm not going to talk about the movie in general. But overall, yeah, I found it lukewarm. It's... There are some parts that, I mean, it gave it a more modern uh, version of it, uh, unlike the, oh, excuse me, uh, the typical uh, Disney setting uh, from back in the day. <laughs> this one felt like it was in Canada just because it was um, out mostly out in the wilderness and the family was a bunch of loggers. Um, some things I have to say about it. Uh, you know, uh, my fellow uh, movie critic, John Stripe, uh, said that, that he liked it, uh, though he thought it was a little fast-paced. Uh, I kind of thought the opposite. I thought the beginning was a little too slow-paced because uh, for about five or ten minutes, it was just Pete and Elliot interacting with, it, with each other, uh, hardly anything adding to the plot. I, it caught my interest um around the middle of the movie um uh, again i'm trying not to get into spoilers but um but it, it was it was the the turning point of the movie where where it started to get my attention back and another problem i had was that i'm not a fan of elliot's redesign I'm not sure if it's the, the CGI or if it's the fur all over him that's putting me off, but it just doesn't look friendly to me. So, so, see, I'm just not a fan of his redesign, but compared to the original, is it better? I'm leaning towards yes. It, it did complement the original movie by adding some of the backstory uh, with... Um, it yeah, gave a little more explanation. Plus, uh, with Elliot's uh, departure at the end, uh, the reasoning behind it made made more sense than just than just leaving Pete when when he found a family. So, I say give it a shot. I still recommend watching the original movie, but I thought the um, the remake did it a little better. I think sometime soon the nostalgia critic will have to call for another old versus new episode. Uh, and, uh, it's actually gotten some, uh, good reviews. Um, let me see, where is it at right now? I, I know it got at least, uh, it's somewhere in the 80s range. It's currently holding in 87 with critics, 81 with audiences. So, so it's, uh, so it's pretty good. Uh, was there, uh, any upcoming movies that I should know about? Oh, yeah, um, uh, they... Gave the trailer for Storks, which I can tell you, this is going to be a horrible movie. Just by looking at the trailer, I do not like the idea of it. Uh, of course, there's the live-action Beauty and the Beast. I, I did see some uh, images of the of the characters there. Um, most notably, I liked. Um, it looks like Gaston is a is a very good. Uh, I, I like his appearance, uh, with because he's supposed to be the, the the most masculine guy in town, the most good looking guy. And I really liked it. Uh, they also gave some of the uh, CGI um, images for uh, Lumiere and and Cogsworth. Um, I'm gonna have to get used to that um, to those designs. Um, they, they were just like, they're station, they're very stationary, uh, like the very first uh, image you saw in the animated version. So, um, there's still some more details that are coming out, but it, 
Should be, um, when is it uh, slated to come out? September 23rd. And, um, let's see. There's also Trolls, which I think is going to be another Smurfs movie. So I don't think that's going to turn out very well. So we'll see. Uh, what else do we got going on? Oh, yes. Uh, Nickelodeon is going to be making a one-hour TV special of Rocco's Modern Life, a, a great series that I watched growing up. It is a fantastic series. If you haven't seen it, go look it up. Look at their episode. It, it is fantastic. It is a uh, slice of life style. Um, it, it lies between the, um, I'd say, boring Doug series to the very grotesque uh, Ren and Stimpy. So it lies in the middle. Uh, so this is the third project that uh, Nickelodeon has announced, uh, with the other two being the uh, Hey Arnold um, film and also the film uh, based on uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple, a very, very good uh, game show back in the 90s. Now, of course, with it being Nickelodeon these days, I'm very worried about how this is going to turn out because... Um, a lot of the stuff that Nickelodeon that has produced in recent years has been crap. So I'm very worried about how they're going to make a, make Rocco. Uh, if you remember from um, Ren and Stimpy, they had their adult uh, party cartoon, which uh, was not, um, if I was correct, was not aired by Nickelodeon. In, in fact, I think it was actually Spike TV that actually aired it. And it was horrendous. Uh, look for any review on a particular episode uh, called uh, Ren Seeks Help. The most disturbing. Uh, it, I mean, Ren and Stimpy was grotesque where it was entertaining. This one was was grotesque to the point where it was offensive. Uh, but we'll just have to see. I currently do not have a release date for it at this time. But we'll uh, keep an eye on that. Um, nowadays, I don't actively look for particular uh, furry uh, videos on YouTube. Mainly uh, because, um, aside from the convention videos, it uh, contains videos of stuff where it just gets furries all riled up. Uh, but most recently... Uh, there's one by a Mr. Amazing who made a 21 minute video about furry YouTubers and his longest one to date. So I, I am pleased that he had managed to dedicate a whole 21 minutes to uh, people in uh, animal costumes. And uh, also, please see that he borrowed some of my videos from my channel. Uh, but I'm not really not complaining, but, uh, yeah, I, I, um, I don't know how to feel about, uh, this particular video that he's made. I mean, all throughout the video it has this angry tone, and I'm not sure if he's trying to be serious or comedic, but, um, uh, like I, like I mentioned er earlier, uh, I... I've watched for the past few months Grade A Andre. He makes these rants that, um, that make some great points, and at the same time, they're very comedic. Uh, this one, I'm not sure if he's just angry, serious angry, or what. But I look in the, uh, the comments, and there are three different types of comments that I see. He makes some good points. Uh, who do you are to judge for he's on and, and try to defend it? And the third type of comment is... Is that the black guy from Channel Awesome? Which, yes, it is. That is Malcolm Ray. Uh, um, I became uh, friends with him because uh, he, um, I think it was last last year that he uh, actually visited uh, North Carolina, one of our fur meets, uh, that I got to know him personally. And, and we've... Um, Met up at conventions uh, ever since. Uh, if you saw me at the con video, 
and just kind of dancing around with him uh, along uh, with along with uh, with Felix. Uh, so um, so, yeah um, yeah. One of my problems with it was I'm not sure what what kind of a video is trying to make here, uh, but uh, and also yeah, he brought up um autistic people. Um, I've mentioned before that uh, I am a um, I I was diagnosed with Asperger syndrome. Something that I gotta deal with for my entire life. It it does get annoying, but I have to deal with it all throughout my life. Um, it and it, it's a very complex. Uh, it's a very complex um, condition that uh, we have a hard time understanding. Uh, if uh, I recently uh, come across. Uh, some stuff where people still believe that uh, autism was caused by vaccines, which it doesn't. You can look at, at uh, any one of uh, Uncle Kage's uh, science, Sue's science uh, videos where he talks about Dr. Wakefield or Dr. Wakefield. Um, it, it's something that we're still trying to understand. And, but nowadays I see uh, people try to use it as a joke, which um, I don't quite understand what the joke is. Um, I mean, I'm personally, uh, I'm I'm sure it offends people, but uh, I just don't see the joke. But uh, but but to be fair, there were some uh, points that he did bring up, like uh, one of the bronies. Um, I don't know what his name is, but uh, I think it's best that I don't. But uh, he like calls up his father, admits he's, that he's a brony, and talks about clopping, the equivalent of uh, yipping. Which I was like, it's, it's better be a joke. It, you don't say that to your parents. I mean, I mean that that is the most awkward thing that I, I have ever seen. And uh, there was also one furry that. Uh, that um, compared us to to Jews. I was like, dude, no, no, you don't, you don't go that route. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what else can I say? It's, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see, where am I at on time right now? Already been eighteen minutes. Hmm. Uh, I might as well get into the uh, upcoming events. Uh, starting tomorrow is uh, Central Plains uh, Fur Con over in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, we also got uh, Netfit Fur Meet on September 2nd to the 4th hmm. over in Olive Ranch, uh, Mississippi. And uh, that reminded me of something. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, we have uh, Zampa Con. From the second to the sixth, over in uh, uh, Bologna, Italy, Brazil Fur Fest uh, from the ninth to the eleventh, over in uh, Santos, Brazil. Uh, furry uh, migration from the ninth to the eleventh, uh, over at Minneapolis. Furry Con from the fifteenth to the eighteenth, over in Rochester, New York. We have Fur Jam from the 16th to the 18th in Sydney, Australia. Uh, H-Con from September 28th to October, what was it? Uh, was it second or third? But it's in um, Erbach, uh, Germany. Uh, it was on the third. Uh, Arizona Fur Con over in Phoenix from... Uh, September 30th to October 2nd, and finally, Fur Wag from September 30th to October 2nd over in uh, Australia. So, um, we got all that out of the way, and um, get uh, show um, 
Yeah, showing the um, uh, Method for me reminded me of uh, something that I uh, found out today uh, because of one particular fur that was a guest of honor there years ago. Um, if any of you know uh, Ispacat, um, yeah, he was uh, one, of the, one of the um guests of honor at Method for me years ago. Um, recently, if, if you remember, um, Louisiana had the, this flood a few weeks ago, uh, which caused a lot of damage. Um, Ispacat was um, unfortunate uh, enough to be one of those people um, who lost everything because of the floods. Um, so now he needs um, he needs help. He is looking for uh, twenty thousand dollars to help him out. Uh, there is a GoFundMe page uh, to help him out, and um, right now he's at six hundred seventy-five. Um, Eighteen people had uh, donated. Um, so. So if you want to uh, help him out, um, his name is um, Alan Ferris, um, F-A-R-I-S. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. Um, he, he does need our help. Um, so I will end it right here. This dragon's mouth is now closing.